Welcome along everybody to highlights of stage 15 of La Vuelta España here on GCN Racing. Yesterday we had a bunch sprint of sorts. The finale was marred by a huge crash with 1k to go, but emerging unscathed was the Irish champion Sam Bennett of Bora Hansger, who took his second stage win of the race by quite some margin. And contrary to the graphics of yesterday, the top 10 on GC, once the times had been recalculated, remained unchanged from the previous day. Primoz Roglic still safely in the red jersey. Today it was the first of two brutal days in the mountains, 154.4 kilometres between Teneo and the Santuario de la Cebo, where we had a summit finish. Four categorised climbs, all of them first category, and that finish won 8Ks long with double digit gradients almost all the way up. With the terrain so tough, it was inevitable that the break of the day would be full of strong climbers. Mark Soyer of Team Movistar was amongst them, and it was he who took maximum points on the first climb of the day, ahead of Theo Gagan Hart of Team Ineos. Also up there in the 17-man group amongst others were Jon Izagiri of Astana, Ben O'Connor of Team Dimension Data here at the back, Lawson Craddock of EF Education First, Sepp Kuss of Jumbo Visma, and Kenta Yoregi of AG2R. Behind them, it was Tony Martin of Jumbo Visma who was taking responsibility for the bulk of the chasing, but with the best placed rider in the break over 10 minutes down and Sepp Kuss up front, they could afford to be reasonably relaxed. The break had seen a significant split on the penultimate climb of the day. Here are O'Connor and Danny Navarro riding in pursuit of Sergio Sumitier of the Escadi Basque Country Murias team. He attacked with 9Ks to the summit and their advantage over the rest was around 1 minute and 44 seconds as they came towards the top. Group 2 here being led by Vasil Kirienka. At this point, Ineos looked like they would be missing out yet again. It was Sumitier who took the maximum 10 points at the top, ahead of Navarro and O'Connor, who took 6 and 4 respectively. Angel Madrasso still holding on to the lead in that competition, but only by the skin of his teeth. You couldn't hold this man back though. Sumitier was soon on the attack again, riding towards the final climb with 22 seconds advantage over everybody else. Cue the robot himself, Kirienka, who set off in pursuit of the Spaniard with 6Ks to the start of the climb. Nobody wanting, or able, to go with him. Two and a half Ks later and he'd caught Sumitier, sprinting straight past him, although unable to distance him, at least for the time being. And in fact, it would be Sumitier who distanced Kirienka once the gradient began to bite, 17% here on the lower slopes. Group of favourites hit that final climb with some incredible speed. Astana determined to do what they could to put Roglic under pressure. Although he still had a man up front in the form of Sepp Kuss. At this point he was being given his own freedom to ride his own race and he was doing very well. He sailed straight past Samitier into the lead. It wasn't long before we had our first attack behind, world champion Valverde the man to do it, but Roglic was very quick to react. And in fact, he was the only man able to. The riders who sit in first and second on GC were proving today once again that they are the strongest in this race. Their advantage over the rest grew to over 15 seconds. Jakob Fulsang here doing his best to limit the damage for his teammate Lopez. Pogaccia closely watching his closest rival in the best young riders classification. Quintana was far from his best again today though, here he is leading the third group of favourites on the road. Kuss was a man on a mission though, it's not often he gets the freedom to ride for himself and he didn't need a second invitation to take it. His lead by this point over 30 seconds over this duo of Guerrero and Gagan Hart. Soyer yeah, had dropped back to pace his teammate Valverde as well, giving both he and Roglic a bit of respite, their gap over more than 30 seconds over the Lopez Pogaccia group. What a race it's been for this man though. The American Sepp Kuss has ridden his heart out for Roglic each and every day, but today it was time for his own success. Playing it up to the crowd, and why not? Guerrero would be the best of the rest, out sprinting Gagan Hart for second. There was no let up behind either though. Roglic and Valverde sprinting towards the line, keen to maximise their gains over the others, and those gains would be quite significant. It would be 40 seconds before Lopez and Pogaccia came across the line, also still locked together. That is the fifth victory of this young man's career, and the first, in fact, outside of American soil. His confirmation of the top 10 on the stage then, Kuss taking it by 39 seconds in the end from Guerrero, Teo Gagan Hart a further second back, Rodriguez and Mark Padern rounding out the top five. No doubt at all, though, who is the boss of this race. Primoz Roglic has not set a foot wrong so far in La Vuelta. His advantage over Valverde remains 2 minutes and 25 seconds, but it's increased up to 3 minutes and 42 over Pogaccia, who leads the white jersey competition still. 3 minutes and 59 to Miguel Angel Lopez, whilst Quintana slips to over 5 minutes down in 5th place. 
Tomorrow, it's the last stage before the last rest day, and it's yet another tough one. Slightly shorter than today at 144.4 kilometers, and with only three climbs instead of four, but not really any less demanding. The first two ascents of first category, and then the final climb to the Alta de la Cubilla is an especial category. 18 k's long, with an average gradient of over 6%, and the long false flat before it makes it an even tougher test. My prediction for the win is Pierre Latour from a breakaway. See you tomorrow.